this video I want to talk to you guys about the type 3 malfunction. Now this is a, this is basically a taught in a couple of different ways and uh, the problem is that it's not taught in both ways for people to understand the function of their gun but that it, it, it only requires really one way of clearing it. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a long video because there are a few things to go over. So first things first is this is basically the symptom. You could also um, see something like this where it's not all the way closed it's got a little bit of a gap but it's not actually hung up on the round trying to feed in so you might have a live round or a spent round uh, in the chamber so a failure to feed is basically a failure to properly feed or a misfeed whatever people want to call it who gives a crap uh, what matters is the symptoms basically the slide is locked back you don't see any brass the slides not closed that's why type 1, type 2, type 3 have unique symptoms that can basically let you autonomically and instinctively kind of clear it without having to really think too much about it. Uh, so, uh, with all that said, type 3, the slide's going to be open a bit and there's going to be no brass hanging out. So, basically, on your visual inspection, that's what you're going to see is, you know, something of that nature. There's going to be brass in, in there and there's going to be it's not going to be hanging out like a stovepipe, like a failure to eject. It's going to be basically there's um, bullets fighting to get in there and they're competing. So uh, with that said, um, failure to feed, there's some people have talked about shortcuts and I, I hate the idea that people are trying to uh, do shortcuts for malfunctions uh, that aren't common sense because uh, here's the problem. They're assuming that there's a live round in here in this shortcut that I'm going to talk about because here's what the shortcut looks like. You're just assuming that there's a that there's basically uh, a live round in there. Typically when this happens, the primer is going to be covered up to where you're not even going to be able to see if there's a strike. And if you're spending enough time to actually register that there's a strike, uh, then you're probably spending a little bit too much time on your evaluation. So obviously you get your symptom and then you go to cover. Now uh, basically if this is a failure to a, a failure to feed or a misfeed or whatever what that could be is actually a failure of the magazine. Uh, the magazine spring or the feed lips have gone to crap because they're not holding the bullet in until the slide actually comes in and pushes it forward. The, the recoil spring is really going to be the problem if it's a failure to extract where basically you have a spent round in here and that's the way I like to practice it. I actually have a spent piece of brass in here. It's already been fired. It's already been expanded and so it is going to stay in here. I'm not going to be able to pull this thing out. It's going to stay in there just like an actual failure to extract because it's expanded and it's kind of stuck in there a little bit until I actually get the extractor to pull it out. So with that said the extractor the failure to extract is going to look pretty much like this and usually what can happen is you could have a chipped extractor hook, a failure of the extractor spring to actually have enough tension because the extractor spring is kind of supposed to uh, help with that extra bit because the recoil spring is supposed to be delaying the slide to basically give the brass time to cool down after it's been expanded. And it cools down and the brass will kind of contract a little bit and you know kind of stop its swelling and go back down because it basically it's like it breathes when it's fired and this is supposed to delay it this little rod right here is supposed to delay it rod and spring uh, until it actually cools down and then the extractor has less work that it has to do but the extractor spring is supposed to be optimized to kind of work in sync with the uh, recoil spring so uh, what can happen is both of them wear or one of them wears faster than the other and basically you have a piece of brass that's trying to be pulled out of there um, before it's actually ready. So uh, typically what this means is that this thing tried to come out a little bit and that's why a failure to extract is typically not going to look this pretty but more like this. An actual failure of the extractor or the extractor or extractor spring or extractor hook, a failure of those two one of those two or both uh, will actually look like this but a failure of the like the recoil spring or and the extractor is typically going to look like like this to where it didn't even have enough to really feed the next round it just was enough to start the cycling and then it obviously the recoil spring pulled it back so basically it's acting like a short a short piston so it just has enough punch to actually just boom 
and send it back just a little bit. And that's typically what it, it'll look like. Regardless, the way to clear it is very simple. So basically you just, you get your visual symptom and who cares, you have a little bit of barrel exposed, there's no visual brass, so it's not just going to be a quick rack, a rolling rack. And, but basically, you get your visual symptom, you improve your position, i.e. You know, cover, concealment, or something like that, and then you keep your eyes on your surroundings. And from here, automatically lock back the slide, pull out the magazine, hook it onto the pinky, and rack Rack, just rack twice and power stroke it twice and then insert the magazine and then power stroke it and you're good to go. So a lot of people um, a lot of people don't like that I would uh, that I would do that because some some people would say just rip out the magazine, reinsert it, rack it, whatever. Uh, my problem is I actually used to practice that whole thing of extracting out the magazine and letting the recoil spring do its thing. The problem is that Number one, if you have a failure of the recoil spring to have good sufficient tension, then you're going to end up running into the problem of your extractor springs got more tension than your recoil spring. So then you basically have uh, the slide hung up on that piece of brass and it didn't actually go forward all the way. So then you still got to rack it twice anyways. So you just wasted all that time. And then you cause another type three because one thing that I've actually seen is, let me go ahead and get this piece of brass. So as I was saying, the problem that I've seen a lot is basically you get, you have the brass stuck in there and the slide's somewhat forward, or even it's all the way back. If you have a failure of the uh, extractor uh, or the uh, recoil spring, then basically you're going to get something like this, and this has happened to me more times than I can uh, say because I actually went through that process of thinking, uh, I, I actually trained myself to actually just extract the magazine and then, you know, it was all good, right? No. Uh, so, or my favorite is um, extracting, reinserting, and then racking. Yeah, went through that phase too. And guess what happens when you reinsert and rack? Back to square one. You know how many times I've seen people demonstrate this, uh, this shortcut, and that's what ends up happening? Whether it's just extract and put back in, and then no bangy, or they extract, put back in, and then they rack, and they're back, right back at the type three. <laughs> And I've actually seen it where they go through that whole process again and the same thing happens. And then they basically have to do what I'll just show you. So basically you have, it stops, stoppage, whatever you want to call it. Visual indication, quick visual indication, boop, improve your position of cover. And then rack back the slide, extract the magazine out, hook it on the pinky, and then send the slide forward, whether you want to use a slide stop or, you know, rack it. Usually people are just going to want to rack it. And then you, you can either rack it again to eject that brass or what some people actually prefer to do if they know they got a positive rack is to reinsert the rack. That basically has it to where they can load the round and they eject the uh, spent round and then they're basically saving time. Does it save time? You be the judge. But that's one of the ways that you can you can clear it. You can opt to clear it in one of those ways. So again, we'll go ahead and simulate uh, one of the more common ones where the brass actually falls out, and you'll see it's basically the same anyway. So uh, sometimes you won't even feel it, and that's that's good if you're keeping your eyes outwards. If you feel it, then obviously you can skip the step or or whatever if you wish. But basically, click, no bang, visual indicator, improved position, recover, lock back the slide, extract the magazine, I rack twice, and then I'm good to go. So you could say you're saving one of your racks um, by basically, you know, not having to rack, you know, an extra time, you're saving time, whatever. That's up to you to decide if it's actually faster or if it's something that you would end up fumbling on because you, you're terrible at counting. Uh, but as long as you practice this a good amount or you get a gun that actually has a problem with the extractor, um, then you know you can get pretty good at it and you can be, it can be very fast and instinctive. It is for me because I've had so many problems with like my Breda 92 that had a chipped extractor and uh, I've had Glocks that 
failed. They typically do uh, after a while, but uh, MMPs, stuff like that, the SIG Classic line, their uh, metal frame guns, they'll typically have this problem, but it's a pretty simple process uh, to clear. Uh, I mean, some people look at this as like the worst thing ever, and really it's one of the simplest to clear because one way we'll typically do it for all of these, whether it's just a uh, whether it's the Type 1, Type 2, or even, you know, the Type 3. This actual way of locking back the slide, uh, ejecting the magazine, and racking, um, actually would clear all of those, technically. So, uh, you know, if you wanted one way to clear a malfunction, and, you know, I would say it's kind of a waste of time for the first two, but, um, you know, who knows? Uh, for some people, if they have failing magazines and they try to correct a Type 1, uh, you could actually cause a Type 3. Um, I've actually seen that where it actually bounces, uh, where a round actually will bounce out and you'll actually get a uh, stoppage of some sort or a malfunction of some sort uh, from racking it so fast and you know, magazines being crap and the recoil spring being crap. But anyways, uh, with all that said, I don't want to waste your guys' time too much, but I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And remember, keep your eye off the gun and, you know, keep your eye on your surroundings and uh, everything will be good. You guys have a good one.